Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. We released an application at Futo last year called GrayJ. This is an application that allows you to view content across platforms inside of one application. Instead of having to install YouTube and Nebula and Twitch and Rumble and Odyssey and Patreon and everything else, you can have one application, you can sign into your account in this application for every platform, and then you have one single subscription feed that includes all of your creators from every platform, all in one place. If you have a creator that you like that has videos on YouTube but only posts certain videos to Nebula, you don't have to go to a separate application. You can view their Nebula creations as well as their YouTube creations all within one subscription feed. The application, in my opinion, provides a considerably better viewing experience than what you get on the stock application for many of these platforms and is an application designed to make it easy for you to follow people regardless of where they are. There are certain people that may go from one platform to another after they get removed for ridiculous reasons, and there are people that are just, well, they just, they just want a viewing app experience that doesn't suck. Welcome to GrayJ. Unfortunately, GrayJ was a program that up until five minutes ago only worked on your Android phone. But we've decided to change that. The most requested feature here is, like, why, are you, why are you releasing a video application for a phone? I watch YouTube videos or Nebula videos on my computer, on my desktop. I don't want to deal with this on a phone. Well, just in time for Christmas, we've got the perfect stocking stuffer for that friend or family member that is a video enthusiast. He's always downloading videos, streaming videos, watching videos from all these different types of platforms to make them as happy as humanly possible this holiday season. Check out GrayJ. So over here, we have the Android version that you can see, but now we have a desktop button over here. When you click the desktop button, you can download a Windows version, a Mac version, a Linux version, as well as the Android version. If you click on the Linux version, which I'm not going to do because I have Spectrum Internet and it would take me half an hour to download, once you download it, all you got do is unzip the application and get to work. This may take a bit because I have a dying NVMe drive in this very, very old computer that I really should take the time to fix, but never do because it belongs to me and not a customer. So once you're in there, all you got to do is do, you double click on GrayJ and the application will open right up. When you open GrayJ, one of the things you'll notice is that even on my failing old sack of garbage computer, it opens virtually instantly. In the beginning, you're not going to have anything here because you haven't enabled your sources. When you click go to sources, you'll be able to install from two different types of sources. The first is official, the second is other source. GrayJ is a program that you can view the source code of. As a result of that, you can make plugins for this and we have produced lots of detailed documentation on how to produce your own plugins so that you could view any platform even if we haven't included that particular platform. If you want to be able to view a platform that we have over here, that's great. All you got to do is click install official sources. But if you want to view something that's not YouTube, Odyssey, Rumble, Patreon, Twitch, Kick, Nebula, SoundCloud, Billy Billy, whatever that is, peer to, or PeerTube, you can do that by making your own plugin or installing somebody else's plugin. We're not here to tell you what platforms you can and cannot watch. We're here to give you freedom over your viewing experience. Once you do that, you just click install official sources. You can click on YouTube like this. When you click Install Selected, you hit Enable, and then it will give you a bunch of different options. If you want the ability to view videos that may be members only because you've subscribed and you've paid for access to those particular videos, you can log into the platform. And if you don't want YouTube to know what you're viewing, you can not log into the platform. You have the ability to inform YouTube when you do view or don't view a video by providing YouTube activity, which by default is clicked off. If you want to watch age-restricted videos, you can. If you want to watch controversial stuff, you can. You have the Return YouTube Dislike feature here. So several years ago, when YouTube Rewind was one of the most disliked videos in the history of YouTube, YouTube decided that they wanted to protect your, their ego over your safety. When it comes to instructional videos, here's how to do plumbing, here's how to do some electrical work or drywall work on your home, YouTube is a great place to go to for instructional videos. And you would be able to very quickly figure out if a video was a complete scam and full of shit based on the like to dislike ratio. If a video has 10,000 likes and it has 4 million dislikes, I might just think twice before listening to what anybody has to say. However, if you can only see that it has 3,000 likes and you can't see the millions of dislikes, you get what I'm going for here. YouTube, they had, their, they had their feelings hurt when these videos that were produced had the highest possible dislike rate that you've ever seen on the platform. So what they did is they decided to put their ego before your ability to be informed or be safe when viewing their platform because their piece is a shit, in my opinion. This returns a feature that, in my opinion, makes YouTube much more safe by allowing you to properly assess what's going on. They've said that this is done so that creators would not have their feelings hurt by harassment when people decided to barrage a video with downvotes for any particular reason. However, creators like myself can see the dislike ratio inside of the own creator studio, even if you don't see it publicly. So if I were to have my feelings hurt by a high dislike rate in a video, that's, that's going to be there regardless of this. This has nothing to do 
with YouTube caring about the creators and it has everything to do with fucking with you. And we're trying to undo a little bit of that. When you scroll down, you have sponsor block as well. I'm personally not a big fan of sponsor block. I don't have sponsors in my videos, but they also, sometimes my kitty will end up in sponsor block and, you know, this application, you can see the source code of it. There's no spyware in it. But if you use sponsor block to block my kitty, well, no. Well, no. It is there as an option, and it is there and easy to enable. You have a bunch of advanced settings as well if you want. Now that we've enabled it as a source, let's have a little bit of fun. So I can go home, and I can just do something like uh, PBS, Frontline. Yeah. You can, let's start adding some people. I could do this. I could add to queue or watch later if I wanted to. Again, loads of the speed of Spectrum Internet. Pretty nice. I can subscribe to them if I want to subscribe to them by clicking here. I can download the video if I'd like to download the video as well. I have a copy for myself later on. <coughs> Find creators. Find men that marks thing over here. This little button over here is awesome. Because if a copyright claim comes out that is illegal against a creator that you like, you do not have to just give up and say, well, I guess that video is not there anymore. That's really cool because some dickhead company decided to provide a false copyright strike and YouTube decided to just listen to them. Right over here, right in the user interface. You got a nice little button over here. And the best part about this button above anything else is that when you use that button, you are not breaking YouTube's terms of service for their API. There's a misunderstanding regarding the YouTube API terms of service, which is that you are misusing the API terms of service by using it in this way. Well, if you're somebody who cares about following the rules, uh, I'm here to tell you that this does not use the YouTube API. So because you're not using the YouTube API, you can't break the API terms of service because you never agreed to it. Over here, you can see this is something that we worked out with YouTube since the last response to their letter seven months ago. I have not heard anything back. Something tells me that they're busy with other things right now. So I imagine the Department of Justice has got them a little bit more busy, that their lawyers are a little bit busy with other matters that may uh, take away their time from learning what an API is. You're not using the YouTube API. So you're good. This application has what's called the lifetime free trial. So we do ask that you buy the application if you find it to be valuable. This application does have full-time, around-the-clock development from several full-time engineers who are exceptionally good at what they do. But it'll continue to work, even if you don't buy it. You can review the source code of the application to ensure that you're not putting anything that spies on you on your computer. And I hope it provides you an excellent viewing experience for this holiday season and many more to come. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.